Hi Trinity Rock and Pop Drummers, hope you're well. Quick talk through video for you here for Uptown Funk uh, from Trinity Rock and Pop Drums Grade 1, Bruno Mars and Mark Ronson. Great tune, man. It's a banger. Driving four on the four groove. Big, uh, tasty fills. What, what's more, what more do you want, man? Uh, let's do it. First things first, I should say, I, I just have been asked, I don't work for Trinity. These videos are just my little talk through of the tune from my perspective. This obviously isn't official advice. It's just me talking through the things that have helped uh, students like looking at these these tunes when they're preparing their grades. All the students who come here to my studio in Cambridge for lessons. I'm just look, just talking it through from that perspective. So you've got three bars rest at the start, and then we come in with two sixteenth notes on beat four four E. So the bar where the drumming starts. One, two, three, four E. The little things that look like arrowheads above the notes are accents. It means you play them a bit stronger than the uh, the dynamic would suggest. So we're at F here anyway, so basically, you give these a whack. Then we're in with this groove. A solid driving four on the floor, so-called feel. So the thing here is the kick drum plays one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. A four on the floor groove. Eight bars of that. Then uh, the groove continues at bar 13. There's also a crash cymbal on the first beat of the bar there. There's a crash cymbal at 13, as I say on beat one. On the repeats that follow, you won't hit the crash cymbal on every single beat. That's just convention in the way drum parts are written out. If there's a crash on the first beat of a groove, on repeats of that groove, you don't hit the crash every time. The next little moment of note is the last bar of the first page. This goes one and two and three, four. So we finish here with a quarter note on the hi-hat beat three. We go floor tom and kick together beat four. This is bar 20, the last bar of the first page. And again, that note's got a big accent, so we lay into that floor tom. Good thing to do is practice that bar separately and then practice the little lead up to it. I'm going to go from 17, so I'm going to play the whole of the last line of the first page. And very often what we'll do with students here is we'll just play stuff like that on a loop. This is such a great way to get into your parts that you're learning, is to loop stuff. It's really super tempting for all the world to just put on the music and just play and bash along and hope for the best. But a great, get, this, get this great habit going that musicians use when they're learning things really well from grade one, which is just take, little, take it out of the song, just get to know it a little bit, take those more tricky moments where there's a little change and just drill it a little bit. I'm gonna do that now, 17 to 20. I'm just gonna loop it a few times. You've really got the feel for that. Uh, 21, it just kicks on the beat. Girls, hit your hallelujah. Four bars. Now we've got this big build up at 25, it goes. So that's the whole line 25 to 30. What we're doing here is we're playing floor tom and snare drum locked together for the first three bars on eighth notes, quavers. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Again, your floor tom and your snare drum here are locked together. They're going to play in sync all the way. The kick drum doesn't play every single one of those notes, but it plays on the quarter note. So basically it maintains that part that's been playing all the way through the song so far, as in one, two, three, four. So something that guys at grade one often really benefit from doing is again, rather than just playing this with the music, is taking that bit out and just rehearsing a little bit, going one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. 
hopefully you can see what I'm doing here, which is just playing the floor tom and the snare together on the eighth notes and the kick drum on the quarter notes. In other words, I'm going one, two, three, four with my kick and one. my two sticks. In other words, the first hit is the floor tom, the snare drum and the kick together and the second hit on the and is just the floor tom and the snare with no kick. One and. Then again on the second beat, two and. Then again, three and. Then again, four. Giving you one and, two and, three and, four and. Now this is really worth breaking it down if you're finding that bit a little bit tricky for most guys and this would totally include me when I was first doing this sort of stuff for most guys and girls at grade one that's a little bit of a coordination challenge one and two and three and four and when we first try it but a little bit of slowing down and just showing your hands and your feet and your brain those combinations a few times you'll soon get it into what we call your muscle memory so called your just your your ability to play that automatically it might seem tricky at the first time the second time but It'll quickly slot into place, man, if you rehearse. Three bars of that. For two lines getting further apart, I meaning crescendo, getting louder. So from MP, mezzo piano, moderately soft, up to F, which is strong. Now here, I would say two, two sides to it. One is the volume, but one is also the tone as well. So here we're talking about dynamic change, or a crescendo, which is volume, but also sound, so the nature of the sound. So I would play for a low dynamic, low stick height, quite near the edge of the drum heads, just for that thinner, thinner tone. As you then build the dynamic over those three bars, you can work your way towards the middle of the drums. Here we go. Real build up, man. That's three full bars on bar four there of that line, which is bar 28 overall. You've got a big hit, floor tom, snare drum, kick on beat one, two, three, four. Then you're gonna do a big old snare drum on beat four, which is accented, big strong hit, which will lead you back into the groove for the instrumental. I'll play that whole bit one time again, 25. On the last bar there, 28, the floor tom, the snare and the kick of beat one. The big upright squiggle is a quarter note or crotchet rest. You've got one of those for beat two, one of those for beat three, and then your big snare drum, accented note, bah, beat four. Now we're into bar 29, the instrumental back to groove. Now we've got these moments with the So these are ander for e ander, 16th notes. Hopefully you know your note values a little bit if you're trying these grade one tunes. Quarter notes, eighth notes, 16th notes, 16th go one e ander, two e ander, three e ander, four e ander. Well here we've got like the last six, haven't we? Ander for e ander. We play one and two. If you're right-handed, right, left, right, left, right, left. If you're left-handed, left, right, left, right, left, right. And again, something we do is we just put that on a loop in the sessions here. So one, two, three. Just to get a feel for it. In reality, the tune you play from 29, three bars of regular four on the floor groove, and then that, that moment. I'll play that line, starting at 29. Then 35 is the same, except there's no, sorry, uh, 33 even is the same, except there's no crash at the start, otherwise the same line. I'll play that one time. like a four bar phrase before and now we're playing it every time 37 38 39 the same 
Now here's the ending, man. A bit tricky, but this up for grade one, I think. 40 and 41. We've got... One and two and three and four, one. So we've got eight notes or quavers, one and two and three and beat four is a crotchet or a quarter note on the beat. And then one, the, the last note of all is the first beat of the bar, the last bar. That's an accented hit, hi-hat, snare drum and kick drum all together. One Some things that drummers often benefit from at grade one. Number one, playing the last note on its own for a bit first. Just getting a feel for hitting all the three of those things at once. Might sound dark, but it works, man. Just laying it down, all three of those things at the same time. Playing just the bar before. One and two and three and four. Snare, kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, snare. And then once you've got a feel for that, putting those two together. Again. One last time, last two bars. And then once you've really, really got a feel for that, wind it back a bit, maybe start from 39. So the whole of the last line of the music now. One of the moments that's quite tricky there for grade one, I think, is going from ba 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 at the end of 39 into one and two and three and four. When you do at the end of 39 and you roll onto the first beat of 40, it's going to go and a 40 and a one. And there's no gap or pause or break or hesitation of any sort, any sort between the 16th notes at the end of 39 and the eighth notes at the beginning are 40. Play it again. One last time from 39. Now, last little bit, I'm going to do 37, 38, 39, 40, 41. Here we go. Bar 37, the last two lines. This is all making a bit of sense. It's a really, really fun little tune. I think if you've got a driving, great four on the floor groove going, you're in business here. A couple of tricky little moments for grade one. I would say the build up and the coordination with the kick, the kick on the quarter note, the uh, snare and top floor tom playing the uh, eighth notes. This is at 25. And the ba 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 ba, 16th note moment. And then finally the ba 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 ba. All nice little challenges for grade one, but nothing that will hold you back too much. You spend a little bit of time in it, get to know it. And you'll be in business. That was Uptown Funk, Trinity Rock and Pop, Drums Grade 1. Thanks so much.